So remember when I'm doing this lecture, make sure that you pin my screen so you can see me. And you have to make sure you pin the one that has the whiteboard on it because I'll be on there twice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do lecture 17 math. Okay, so the first math problem, it says you have whole milk that has 3.25% of milk fat. And knowing that you just had 10 grams of milk fat, how many grams of milk did you drink? Okay, so you have a glass of milk and um, a portion of that milk is fat. The other portion is different uh, chemical makeups. Okay, so uh, we have to try to figure out how much of the milk did you drink, not the fat of the milk, okay? Um, so if you do your little boxes that, um, see. Oh no, I don't wanna do that. All right, let's go ahead and I'll just do, I'll just draw it. Okay, so if you do your box methods like Jelena likes to, right, you have your 3.25% here, and then we have 100% of the solution, but we wanna figure out what 3.25 of that solution is. So you put your 10 grams here, we don't know what that is, so we're solving for that. So you can um, multiply across, and if you do that, you get 1,000. And then multiply here, then you have 3.25x. Then if you divide 3.25 by each side, then you should get 307.69 grams. And if you round to the nearest whole number, you would say 308 grams, if you rounded. Um, if you want to do dimensional analysis, you can still do dimensional analysis for this. So uh, you would have, um, you're solving for grams. So you know you have 10 grams here. And then your 10 grams is that 3.25% of the milk. And then you have 100% of milk, so you have to figure out what the rest of it is. So you can actually cancel out your percentage signs. And then you can multiply across this way and put 1,000, and then 3.25. And then again, you would still get 307.69. And if you were to round it, it's 308 grams. Then I was going to show you something. Hold on one second. Where did I put it? <laughs> Where did I put my notes? Oh, did I lose it? Maybe it's right here. So another way that you can do this is you can say 3.25% of X equals 10 grams. You can do it this way, but if you do it this way, you have to remember to change this to a decimal. So to change it to a decimal, you have to move this three, three spots to the left, so one, two. So you would have zero, so 0 0.0325x and then 10. And then you divide this by this side, you divide this by this side. And then if you have your calculator, then you still get 370 or 307.69.23 if you want to 
do it completely. Um, and then if you want to round to the nearest whole number, you still have 308. So you can do it each, you can do it any one of these ways, whatever you, however your brain thinks, that's how you should do it. Okay, so the next one. Uh, you have you went to the grocery store and you bought a lot of groceries. And so 25% of the total money that you spent was on produce. And that was $14.79. So this $14.79, that is the 25%. So you have to figure out what was the total bill then. If we know that the 25% was $14.79, what how much in total? did I spend? All right, so if you're doing your box method, you would have your 25% and that's equivalent to 1479. So what is your 100%? Well, we don't know, we're solving for that, right? So you're gonna cross multiply. So if you multiply um, the top, uh, to the bottom to the top, then you would have 1,479 and then you're gonna cross multiply this way, and then you would have 25, oops. You have 25 down here. And then if you divide it, you would end up with 59.16. So you can do it that way, or you need to know how much money is the total amount, right? So we're solving for money. So if you like dimensional analysis, you can do it this way too. So we put our money, because that's our unit up here. This should be a decimal. And uh, that's 25% of the bill, but I need to know what the total amount of the bill is. Again, can cross out this unit, can multiply the top across, and if we do, we get 1,479, and then multiply the bottom, 25, and if you divide it, you have $59.16. Um, if you liked the other way that I showed you, you could say that 25% of X is $14.79. Remember, you have to change this into a decimal. So that would be 0 0.25 is 14.78. Then you divide this to get rid of that side. You can divide this. And then if you do 14, oops, 14, ah, 14.79. This calculator, I need to like invest in not a dollar calculator. So if you do that, then you still get $59.16. So you can do it either way, whichever way works for you. Okay. Um, so the next one is number three. Okay, so you have a tube feeding, and 9% of that is protein by volume, but you need 80 grams per day. So how are you going to solve for that? So if you're using the box method, you know that 9% or the 80 grams, and you need to know the total percent, but we don't know how much that is. So you're going to cross multiply. You 
get 888.88, but we can round to the nearest whole number, so 889 grams per day. Um, if you like dimensional analysis, then we're solving for how much, uh, how many um, grams per day the patient's going to receive. So this is kind of like what I was showing you last week, where when you have your percentage, you can take it um, over the, um, oops, uh, how do I explain this? So you're actually solving for MLs because you need to know like how many, how much you're going to pour in order to uh, provide the patient with the correct amount of solution that has this amount in it. Okay, so you're solving for mLs per day. Sorry, this should have been mLs here. So you have 100 mLs is 9 grams, because remember how I, t I taught you if you have a percentage of a solution, you can change this into a fraction. So to change that into a fraction, you just do that right, to change the percentage to a fraction. And then you can also just add grams per ml. Um, and then here we need 80 grams. And then we can cancel out. We can move across, so 8,000, then nine, and then 880. You could also put 80 grams per day down here if you wanted to as well. And then you just round Okay. And then if you liked, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oops, sorry guys. If you like the uh, equation way, then you're gonna have your 9% of X is 80 grams. You have to change this to a decimal, so it's going to be 0.09x is to 80 grams. And then divide this side by 0 0.9 and this side by, oops, 0 0.9. Let me rewrite that. 0 0.9. And then you would have 888 or whatever. So if you round to the nearest whole number, it would be 880 nine again. So you can do it that way as well. All right, let's do the next one. So for patients getting an IV infusion with 0.45% of sodium chloride, but the patient needs 5 grams, what's the total solution? So that tells me it's mLs that I'm solving for because it's a liquid. Okay, so if you do your box method, you're going to have your 0.45%, and that's equal to 5 grams. Then, but we need to know what the 100 percent is and we can't we have to figure that out so here we're going to multiply by cross multiplying so then you'd have 500 and then 0 0.45 and then if you do the division you end up with 1111 um, and if we round just to the nearest whole number then we would say 1111 uh, mls if you want to do dimensional analysis, we're solving for mLs, and you change this into that fraction that I was telling you about.
Okay, and then if you like the equation, you would have your 0.45% of x is 5. To convert this to a decimal, so it'd be 0 0.0, let see, 1, 2, 0, 4, 5 of 5. There's still an x. Let me rewrite that. Sorry. 0. 0.0045x is equal to 5. Then you have to divide this side to get the x by itself. Let's do number five. Okay, so here we have a parenteral nutrition formula that contains 20% of glucose. But the patient needs 270 uh, grams. Um, so how much of the formula should be infused? So I, I know I'm solving for mLs because it's asking about how much formula. Um, so if you want to do your box method, you know that 20% of 270 grams, but we need to know what the 100% is. Again, Cross multiply. If you want to do dimensional analysis, then you would say that 100 mLs is 20 grams because we're converting this right here, right? 20 grams into 100 mLs, but then I can flip it. Remember, I can flip it to use it. I need this to be in mLs up here for my dimensional analysis. And then you plug in your 270 grams here so you can cancel these grams out. And then if you like the 20% uh, with the fra the equation problems, and you have your 20% of X is 270 grams. So then remember, you have to change this to a decimal. So one, two, so 0 0.20 X is 270 grams. Divide this by 0 0.20. Divide this by 0 0.20, and you still end up with the same amount. All right, any questions on the math? I'll post this up as soon as it downloads. I had issues the other day downloading lecture 17. I finally got it up yesterday. All right, well, we, you guys are free to go. I appreciate you guys hanging out and listening to the lecture. You only have one more lecture and then it's gonna be final time. So hopefully next week we can do like a little bit of a review for, and kind of get you guys ready for your uh, final. I have to meet with Shai regarding the time frame that we're going to allow for you guys, unless she already discussed it with you. Um, I don't know what she wanted, what her plan was. So probably meet with her, have a discussion, and then we'll post it in the forum so that you guys are aware. Um, 
It's about two hours, 15 minutes. So, all right, any other questions? Do you know how far we have to go on the um, medical terminology? Do you know how far? As far as words that, that, uh, that are going to be on the final? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Terminology as far as what's going to be covered on the final. If you want full credit, you have to do every single assignment, even the extra practice, and then I will give you 100 points. If you don't, then I'm grading it based on what you scored. So it behooves you to do all the assignments because you'll get 100%. I, be I, be I believe it went into um, section three or something like that. Yeah, you have to do all three sections, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys. Yeah, so I'll have math. I'll put a math video up for you guys too. And then I'm probably going to have a math review kind of similar, like a practice sheet like we did for the midterm. So you guys can, you know, kind of have an idea of what type of questions are on there and you'll feel ready for it. Are you already talking about the medical terminology? Oh, okay. So what I said is, I kind of have a trade off with you guys. If you do every single assignment, including the practice, extra practice one for medical terminology, even if you scored 70% on something, if you do everything, I will just give you 100 points for your medical terminology. But if you don't do the extra practice, then I grade it based on what you scored. So it behooves you just to do everything because you'll get 100%. And that's what I have to talk to uh, Shy about, Kayleen, is when we're opening it and when we're closing it. Yes, Misha, so the hangmans and the crosswords, yes. So it's only the medical terminology. You don't have to do the extra practice for the lecture content. Does that make sense? But if you want 100% on your medical terminology, especially if you haven't scored well on some of your stuff, then you'll want to do those hangmans and their crosswords. In our regular course, um, we have it set up different. You have to do the hangman and the crossword to uh, get full credit. So they kind of changed that on us last minute. Melissa, when I was asking about the hours, um, I meant like uh, the clock hours or like class hours that it lists on Jeji. Um, I guess, like our, I guess our attendance hours or something. Are you talking about for the final? Uh, no, just like in general. Like we're supposed to be on for so many hours. There's a spot when I go to my profile and it says that like a number of hours. Mm -hmm. Is that not, I, I was just wondering what it's supposed to be at. So this class should take you four hours to do. So by the time you listen to my lecture, uh -huh. watch all the videos, do your math assignment, go over your math, it's supposed to take four hours. Oh, now remember, okay. in those four hours, you still have 40 minutes of break, right? Okay. You get two, two 10 minutes, or you get one 10 minute break and a 30 minute break normally. Okay. So, um, so really you're only, the class is really three hours and 10 minutes of lecture time. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I'm wondering, so what what it says on, um, like, on, on Jeji, what should it, like, where should I be at right now? Like, what, how many hours should we be at total? Because it lists, on mine it says 60 hours. I'm not really sure. If you've missed class, you have to make up those hours. Haven't, okay. I Yeah, so if you haven't missed class, you're okay. Or okay. if you haven't been marked absent, you're okay. If you've been marked absent, you need to reach out to Sammy Chavez, and I'm going to drop her information here. Um, it's your responsibility to make sure that you get your makeup work. I, I'm not going to chase people around and make sure that they get it done. So if you've been absent, you know who you are. You need to reach out to Sammy Chavez. You need to get your makeup work and you need to get it done. So your makeup work is gonna be um, eight to 10 page outline. 
of the chapter that you missed um, or the lecture that you missed, plus you have to write a, a 500 word, uh, they call it an essay, but it's like a little more than a page um, of, um, so you have to write a paper on something regarding the content that we covered that day. It's double spaced, it has to be a uh, New Times Roman or Times New Roman, whatever it is, I can't ever remember, and then 12 font and double spaced. Um, if you don't do that, then you will not move forward in the program because you didn't complete your hours and you'll be put on remediation and really there's not any remediation for this course. And if you've missed a second day, your grade will drop 10%, whether it's excused or not. So it's really important to make up those hours because um, that can prevent you from moving forward. So all the hours that you spend time on Moodle, like for your homework, studying and stuff like that, that doesn't go count. That's not for these hours, right? That's not the hours, the that, hours that count are the hours that I take for attendance. So when you show up to my class and I take attendance, you get credit for being there the whole time. If you missed attendance and you were marked absent, then you're missing hours and you have to make those up. Is all that found in Jeji? Yeah, you should be able to look under Jeji and see what your attendance is. Okay. Um, so also if you've missed work or missed days and you're absent, you cannot make up any of the work unless you have a, an approved excused absence. So it has to be one of those qualifying factors that are on your syllabus. So you need to send that to uh, Sammy, my instructional aide, and then she will input your grades once it's been excused. No, so you don't have, Samantha, the, anything that's in the lecture portion of the class not related to medical terminology, if it's extra practice, it's just extra practice, that's it. But for medical terminology, if you want to do the trade with me where I'm just going to give you the full 100 points, you have to do the extra practice work, the hangman and the crosswords. So um, you know whether you've missed class or not, or if you just want to check and make sure you didn't get marked absent by mistake or something, and we have a way to go in and look to see if you were logged in in Moodle during that time, then you can go to your apps, you can go to your Jeji and you can look at your attendance in there. All right. Any other questions? Have you had a chance to um, look over whatever we fixed on the previous lectures map? I emailed you the other day. I haven't. So I haven't had time to. So the the last time I posted in the forum, that's the last time I had to work with grades. So probably tomorrow I'll be able to get caught up on grades. I'm on campus now on Wednesdays with my students. So um, for clinical skills lab. So uh, that takes up a lot of time. So yesterday I got there at 5.30 in the morning and I didn't leave until five at night. So it was a long day. I haven't had a chance to look at it just yet. Maybe today or tomorrow I can um, try to get caught up. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and usually like if you email me, if I haven't responded, it's probably because I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. When people email me, I'll leave it in my inbox so that way I don't forget to respond. And usually I try to respond and say that I've um, corrected it or I've updated your grade in Judgy. Or if it's a bunch of people, then I'll post it in the forum so that you'll know. All right. Um, I'll probably go over the attendance in Judgy to see if you have any missing stuff and reach out to you if you're like if you were marked absent so that there's not any confusion, but you should be able to check in Judgy. Oh, I I'm sorry, someone's speaking, but I can't really hear you very well. It's really soft. 
I said I went into class today, but I got kicked off for like a second, like no, that two minutes matter. max, and I lo okay. That won't I'll matter. As long as you logged, as long as you marked here in the chat box, you're going to be marked here today. People do get kicked off. As long as you log back in, you're okay. Like I said, we can go into Moodle and we can see how long you were in Moodle or whatever, um, and so we can kind of judge from there. And did you take your quiz? Things like that. Are you turning in your homework? I mean, we kind of look at a a group of things. So. Plus, I usually remember like who was there because I, I peek at it. So, and and you've marked here. So, all right. Any other questions? Ah, uh, thanks, Misha. Um, so one more lecture you'll have with Shy on Tuesday, and then you guys are gonna prep for your final, and then we'll send out more information and um in information to help you study. I think she's been posting like the the worksheets on the general forum, like the ones that I give you that you don't have to turn in. They're just to kind of help you study. And she's been putting the supplemental videos and then we'll probably have like a cahoots game or something for you to play and um, to practice. All right, any other questions before I go? Yeah. Are you going to do the lecture 18 math on next week or something? are you gonna push um, I will probably make a video for the lecture for math, yeah. Unless Shai, unless Shai goes over it with you. Does Shai? Go over the math with you. No. Okay. Yeah. So if she doesn't go over the math. Just let me know. I don't mind, you know, making a quick little video for you guys. I'm. I don't know if it's helpful. I mean, sometimes I accidentally write stupid stuff down because I'm not paying attention, and then I feel bad because I'm like, I hope I didn't confuse people. But, um, I mean, I'm happy to do it. All right, so you guys are having a virtual party today after or a virtual party the day after <laughs> you finish? I was saying after we finish the final, we should all get oh, together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with this whole COVID thing right now. Like things are okay because it's not the season for flu and stuff like that, but um, I think you guys will probably be in a better position because it's summer um, than uh, later, I guess. I'm hoping you guys will be on campus I for skills lab at least because it's really hard to do it virtually because you guys have to make videos and it's just harder because we have when you're in class, we can stop you right away and say, okay, you need to stop. I want you to look at what you're doing think about it, we'll give you prompting questions. I can't do that when you send the videos. And so it makes it harder uh, to stop bad behavior, right? <laughs> After the fact, but um, I shouldn't say bad behavior. That sounds terrible, but you know what I mean? To correct what's incorrect. Anyway, I'm hoping that we'll be able to be back on campus. Um, we just, like I said, we just started that yesterday, it went pretty well. It's annoying, you have to wear a mask, you have to sit six feet away. You have to be in different classrooms because we can only have so many class kids, kids, so many students in a classroom. And so um, it could be challenging that way, but it went really well. We got a lot done yesterday. It was nice. And it was nice to be with people because that's why I teach because I like to interact with students. And so it was nice. So I'm hoping we'll be able to continue that, but there's not any guarantee because we don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have to go back on this whole stage one process again so try are you, are you limited to how many students you have in your class uh so we the the we have 33 i think in that group and so we had three classrooms i have three instructors so each instructor was in a classroom we still divide the skills up but the students stay in a specific classroom and then they're we pull them out of the classroom to go to the skills lab to do whatever skill it is we're doing like five at a time because you can't have a lot in there and then some of the skills we were able to do in the classroom with the students like we worked on blood pressures we worked on um heart sounds lung sounds and neuro checks yesterday because those were things that students struggled with when they were making their videos and we wanted to make sure they did it with an instructor in front of them so that we could help them so that's kind of what we worked on yesterday was kind of getting caught up on those skills where students didn't do so well um and then we're hoping to get caught up. If not, then uh, for this group, they might have to do makeup over the summer break because 
there's skills that you have to do with an instructor. You can't do it at home, like putting a Foley in or putting an NG tube in. You need the mannequin and the dummies to do that. So we kind of had to move some of those skills back. Um, yeah, are you so, practicing the social distancing, like the six feet and the mask mm -hmm. while you're in class mm -hmm. still? Yeah, so students, have, when they come to campus, they have to be wearing a mask before they enter the building or a scarf or a cloth mask or something. And then if they don't have a mask, then we will be providing one for them. Um, most students had their own little mask that they like to wear. And then we encourage students to stay six feet away if they were comfortable with the with getting closer and working with one another, we allowed them, you know, to do that. But we have them sitting every other desk to to maintain the distance. So, in the you saw the classroom one because I think no, you guys you guys haven't been on campus yet, huh? So in a classroom, we had a total of the max maybe eleven students. So it's pretty spaced out. Some of the students still wanted to sit together, and they were mad at me because I was like, no, yep. Yeah, you have to move so but you know keep practicing healthy ways and encouraging other people to practice healthy ways and maybe you'll be on campus i hope <laughs> all right guys um i will go ahead and uh send out this video and